views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Neff. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Kelly Neff, and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. Please stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience healing, inspiration, and of course, creativity, because every month on the show, we have some of the most gifted scientists, healers, speakers, and authors helping you to become the greatest version of yourself. And you can find us here at our new time, the first Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can also download all of the archives at thelucidplanet.com and just search for Lucid Planet Radio on SoundCloud, iTunes, etc. Also, please follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, The Lucid Planet. You can see some glimpses of my weird and wonderful life. And stay tuned for my new project, Slut Logic, which is going to be a book and a show project coming out hopefully by the end of the year, which is all about empowering people's authentic sexuality and also exploring where love and sex is going in the future. So very exciting stuff. And it really ties in with the theme of today, which is, of course, that spring it's finally here. And <laughs> allegedly, I mean, it did snow yesterday here in Denver. So, um, but I hope you're enjoying the sun on your face. Maybe you're feeling a little frisky, a little active. Yesterday was Beltane, which is of course May 1st. Um, and to honor this turning of the wheel as we move into spring in the Northern hemisphere, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome one of my favorite longtime guests, Judica Illis, back to the show. And we are going to talk about really the rise of the divine feminine and the awakening of the goddess, if you will, and how ancient pagan traditions and holidays like Beltane still have significance for us for sex, for fertility, and how many of these rituals can apply today. Now, Judica was, of course, back on the show back in October, time flies. Um, and we're going to also talk about a little bit about witchcraft and magic and spells and just how we connect the goddess of the past to the goddess of the present and the future. Um, a little bit about Judica, if you're just tuning into her on the show, she fell in love with the magical arts as a child has and has been studying them ever since. She is one of the most prolific writers in the area I have ever seen when it comes to spirituality, rich, witchcraft, um, and the occult including the Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells, Encyclopedia of Richcraft, the Big Book of Practical Spells, and literally so many more. Um, she's incredible. So on that note, let's please welcome Judica to the show. Welcome. Hi. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. I'm so glad to be back. Oh, yay. Me too. I, I'm so happy to have you back. Um, we last spoke back around All Hallows' Eve. Yeah. What have you been up to since then? Oh, boy. I've been teaching. I've been learning. I've been writing. And I started a new book, which hopefully will be, you know, you know, fingers crossed, everything goes as planned. It will be out in 2019. Yay. So, yeah, keeping busy. Can you give us any teasers on the direction you're no. going in? No? Uh, there will be spells. Oh, there will be spells. <laughs> there will be spells. There will be spells. Like, there, will there will be, be new spells. spells. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, that's going to be super exciting. Um, you know, sometimes I think when you're connected to this kind of material that so many people are being drawn into, there's just that nonstop channel of prolific yeah. information. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I love and, that. And, and yeah. Once you, once you connect it, it, um, it kind of, it, it's like a 24 seven flow. It just keeps yes. coming. Yes. And I think it's really interesting. You bring that up 
Um, the idea it's talked about in a lot of esoteric traditions of channeling, mm -hmm. you know, connecting to something. And I definitely am a huge believer in flow, both from a spiritual perspective and a scientific perspective. Um, yeah. but do you have any advice for aspiring creative people out there who are looking to get into that flow? I think just to pursue your passion and it's a little bit like, uh, you know, the trail, oh. And Hansel and Gretel, you, you, you have to follow your trail and see where it leads you because one thing leads to another and you, you know, let yourself fall down the rabbit holes. Oh my and, God, I love that. And then when you do look around and see where you are and, you know, start turning over the rocks and see what's under them, yeah. uh, you know, and, and it will lead you into interesting places. And I think this is a great time of year to start a project. Absolutely. Right. I mean, so let, let's talk about spring a little bit. You know, what yeah. what makes this time so special and what makes Beltane such a traditionally very special holiday? And it is a holiday. You know, Beltane is the Celtic name, but in uh, the German lands, they call it Valpurgis. Mm. It is different, you know, in um, ancient Rome. This was the time of the Floralia, the festival of the oh, really? god of Flora. So yes. it is, it is, I think wired into into the landscape or into the time you know traditionally it's believed this is the time when earth wakes up and you know all the sexual feelings start you know that maybe have been dormant when it, you know it's cold it's cold and it's you know everything's icy and freezing and you you know you just you just want to get under the blankets and have soup and not <laughs> think about anything, but now it's starting to warm up and all these feelings are perking up and yes. uh, it's a good time, whether it's literal sexuality, literal fertility or creative endeavors, whether that's metaphoric, it's a really good time for it. Awesome. And, you know, it's funny because this is something that's been around. I mean, do you, what is your estimate? Like how long have Indigenous people in the globe been celebrating the birth of spring. Years. Yeah, oh, I mean, thousands of years. Uh, you know, the Floralia goes back to pagan Rome. Yeah. Uh, Beltane, you know, the pagan Celts. We're, we're talking not in centuries. We're talking in millennia. Millennia. You know, who knows? I think, I. It, you know, this is my personal perception. You know, don't, don't you know, don't put this in your thesis. But um, I, I <laughs> would it. say probably... Probably into pre prehistory, probably before, you know, it, when it's documented, we already know it's happening. So probably before that. Absolutely. And you have to wonder these cave paintings, right, from thousands of years ago, yeah. they often yeah. predict the rebirth and they yeah. depict, you know, the, the flora and all animals and all that kind of stuff. So it just Do you know the concept of the Beltane fairs? I would love to hear it. Uh, it, well, it's it's a sexy fair. Um, Ooh, I like sexy fair. <laughs> you know, in the winter, you know, especially in, in you know in the in Europe and the northern areas, people were battening down the hatches, and you're not really going very far. But mm -hmm. you know, so by the you know by the time May r rolls around, you've pretty much run out of your supplies. And so there would be, and imagine you're living in a village, you're seeing all the same people, and probably everybody in the village is related to you. So yeah. what they would do is they would have these huge fairs where, you know, you would bring whatever it is that people are selling, whether it's copper or, you know, handiwork, artifacts, artisan stuff, whatever it is. But at the Beltane Fair, it was also a time to find partners, oh, whether... Wow. Sometimes, sometimes marriage fairs where people would literally, you know, go home with someone or bring someone home, but sometimes just for the night. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, you know, m maybe genetically speaking, the local people are a little too closely related to you for it to be healthy. So True. that was the way they, they, you know, they kept the gene pool Mixing healthy. It up. Gosh, yeah, I mean, yeah. all I can think about in the modern day equivalent is festival season started a couple uh -huh. weeks ago. And yeah. it's exactly that. It's like thousands of people from all over and everyone's selling their handiworks and yeah. everyone's exactly. outside and there's music. And I, I always have this belief that at our core, we're trying to connect with yeah. our nature as human beings, yeah. which 
isn't to be locked away in the concrete jungle in right. isolation right. from each other. And maybe we're tapping into our ancestral heritage. Exactly. But I, I would say back then it was done without shame. And yes. That's, you know, so if you had a hookup, you know, it, it was accepted. It was expected. I mean, yes. that's why you were there. And I think and that's ideally, definitely like in the oh, – yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, you go, go ahead. I was going to say in the festival, like, uh, you know, a lot of like the new – the kind of like new age, hippie, shanti festivals mm -hmm. type. It's totally without shame, you know. Right. Right, but right. what I want to talk about, and we're going to take a break in a few minutes, so I don't know how deep we can get right now, but one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about was how we got from the goddess and the time of the goddess and, you know, the May Queen and the May King going off into the woods to make love under the, you know, under the stars and drink the morning yeah. dew after, how we got from there to what was basically a totally anti-sex, very shameful right. society, and how now are we emerging out of that into something yeah. else? Yeah. And uh, that's really what I'm so curious about because we're seeing all these movements for female empowerment and, and all really equality amongst all people. And I just can't help but wonder if, you know, maybe is this a new or new rebirth into kind I of hope so. thing? Me too. I hope so. I hope a time of, you know, kindness. Yes. And acceptance and, and you know, yes. people yes. not being superly judgmental over other people. And well, and especially coming from the p paganism to me has been that kind of a tradition of being connected with nature. Right. And the well, earth. I, you know, I, I think there, are, you know, the author M. Scott Peck says that anything of importance has multiple roots. Yes. So, you know, that that's a really profound question. Mm. And I think there are multiple roots. And of course, one of them is a suppression of paganism, mm -hmm. and um, by you know in, in Europe, a Christianity who you know has a very um, it, it's it's a controlling yes, religion, very you know, much so. and, you know, especially at that time on a very local level. Uh, there is I don't know if you've ever read Leonard. I think the author is Leonard Schlein, the um, Alphabet and the Goddess. And he no, talks not. about it's a it's a very interesting book, and he talks about how literacy has traditionally not been beneficial for mm. the matriarchy, for, mm. for for the divine feminism, and that not pre literate societies tend to be very goddess friendly, and you know it's it's a history book, and he follows all these different areas where as they become literate. It becomes more patriarchal. Women are controlled. Controlling. Different values, and it's interesting because and, and it's it has to do with the changing of brain chemistry, with how you absorb information. Oh, like right and left brain. Right, type. because it, it's no longer oral. Because if you're not literate, you're hearing it, you're processing mm. it, um, versus oh you know visually. But I'm thinking, you know, so many of us, me too, we're all reading online now. We're yes. reading digitally, and I suspect that's affecting our brain chemistry too. Oh my gosh! I hope in, I hope in positive <laughs> ways. You know, I, I hope love in, that. In compassionate Wait, ways. Can we take a quick break and talk yeah. more about that? Because <laughs> okay. I've become completely, my rabbit hole has been all about how technology is changing our communication and oh, our yeah. brain. So I would love to talk more about that. Um, we'll come back very shortly here on Lucid Planet Radio. And Judica Ellis and I, we're going to talk much more about all of this, plus some of the sex and fertility rituals you can use right now in your life today that can make positive changes and get you what you want. So stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. Are you searching? Are you searching? Are you searching? Looking for a sign? A message, for a, sign. a message you need to hear? From the great unknown? From the most mysterious place? That is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are. The universe put someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to that you may find insight with. The Angel Lady dot net. 1-800-323-1790.
Defining success and putting minds to work. With the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, Rudy Racine will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatcho.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and if you're just tuning in, my guest today is the wonderful Judica Illis, who is here talking with us about sexuality, the divine feminine, Beltane, rituals, witchcraft, all that good stuff, um, as well as history and the future. So we basically are going to cover the full range of the human experience today. <laughs> um, but before we continue, I just really want to make sure that everyone who is listening knows how to contact you, Judica, to find out about all of your books books, the workshops oh, you do, all your activities and thank stuff. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I, my website is my name, J-U-D-I-K-A-I-L-L-E-S.com. And I'm on a lot of social media. I'm on Facebook and Twitter, and I've just started an Instagram. So, And I, and I do post <laughs> my events, and you can find my books wherever fine books are sold, online or offline. And uh, I actually um, will be at a store in Raleigh. Uh, yeah. not long after the show airs um, at the Holy Rose in Raleigh. We'll be talking about sea goddesses and um, <gasps> the well, metaphysical that's... aspects of the rose, with very divine feminine. So that's at the Holy Rose in uh, in Raleigh, and I'll be in New Orleans in August for Hexfest. And, I, you know, I, <laughs> I love to meet people who read my books. It's wonderful. Yes. Oh my gosh. Hexfest sounds really lit. Hexfest. <laughs> <laughs> I can get behind that. And New Orleans is the best place for it. Huh? New Orleans is the best place. Yeah. And I'll be talking about uh, the Countess uh, Ershabit Batori, the, the, you know, the so-called blood countess and her, her own magic spells. Oh my gosh. How exciting. It's a fun guys. class. Okay, yeah, so judicaillis.com. I like you're on Instagram now, too, because I, f- I really like Instagram. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm, I'm a feeling may went my way around, but I really like it a lot. I think what I'm noticing, we well, before the break, we were talking about the way in which we receive yeah. information kind of dictates how we interpret it and what we gain yeah. from the information. Yeah. And I agree with what you were just saying, how the digital media is like this new frontier yeah. of kind of very Aquarian. It's very Aquarian. Yeah. And, and very I'm Aquarian. Aquarian too, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I have Aquarius rising. It's very yeah. Aquarian. Oh, there you and, go. And, and not just, not just passively, but I mean, it's something to, you know, you know, the, you know, they say you are what you eat and you have to be mm-hmm. conscious of, you know, the, the things you consume, but the information we consume also has a profound effect on the individual and yes the way your brain is wired and how you perceive. And it's, it's really fascinating. You know, it is. And you know what? So my, my, my biggest complaint is Facebook is literally just filled with like tons of negativity and hate right now. And like, I mean, people just arguing, literally strangers arguing over nonsense. And I get it. We live in a politically charged incendiary time. It's in the air right now. I think we're very very divided right now. We are. Confrontational. You know what's really great? Instagram is just looking at cool stuff. 
there's no <laughs> political bias. I mean, yeah, people post yeah. memes, but it's like really just, it's like art. It's like a feast for the eyes. Yeah. You know, I get so yeah. much inspiration, just the colors yeah. and what, and I follow like drag queens and fashion and all, you know, yeah. all kinds of like fun stuff that and crystal pages. Oh my gosh. The crystal pages are just ridiculous. So yeah. I yeah. feel yeah. like that's it. And that's kind of more like of a feminine way of getting information. You're not reading text. You're looking at visuals mm-hmm. and kind of seeing how you feel about the visuals. And um, yeah, I don't know. So that's just my two cents about it. I definitely feel like I'm in a better mood after looking at Instagram than looking at Facebook. Um, but Although I have to say, my I, I have my Facebook pages are full of really lovely metaphysical people. Oh, that's yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I I, um, I I am lucky. You know, maybe yes. I I avoid the political discussions. So I don't I know. Don't think- <laughs> But I think it comes back to what we're talking about, which is like the pushback of the divine feminine. Um, Like we were talking about the history, the context, thousands of years this was followed. Christianity came into the picture just over or under 2000 years ago. And it really just was super controlling, super anti-sex. And I don't have a problem with any religion. I I have a problem with uh, dogma and with lies. (laughs) It's, It's not nice to boss people around. No, it's you not. Know, exactly. People have to be free to follow their That's own personal path. And, you know, as long as they're not harming anyone, yes. why not? Yes. Why do we all have to believe this? This is like the exact. I, I, it's not realistic. I mean. Well, no, and look what's happened with Christianity. I mean, look at all of the scandals that have happened. You know, that's the thing. It's like, well, it comes so with repressive. power, you know, because yeah. it stops being about religion and it starts being yes. about power. Well, but, you know, what you were saying before, Dr. Kelly, all the crystals. Yes. Look at the amazing variety of crystals. And look at the amazing variety of flowers. You yes. couldn't catalog all of them if you devoted your whole life to it. So if there is a creator, why, and if the creator created this diversity, why wouldn't the creator want people to be diverse like that too? And we need to, maybe every single one of us has a different. We're all unique snowflakes. (laughs) Yeah, we are snowflakes. I agree. Well, and that's why I'm, I'm finding it from a sexuality point. So interesting because I grew up in a time when if you came out as gay, it was kind of, it was actually still hard, like in the nineties. And oh yeah, trans, yeah. trans had very yeah. little disability and now uh, uh, visibility. Nowadays, I'm doing my research for this book I'm working on, and young people like under the age of 18, so many of them I identify as gender non-binary. Yeah. As yeah. in not male or female, but some other combination that works for them. And this would not have been allowed, I feel like, when I was growing up. It's but a different time. But there's yeah. also very you know, it is the beginning of the you know, it. it's it's a cliche, it. the Aquarian age. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very. I mean, if you if you study astrology, all of these things are so Aquarian. Totally. That that total freedom of identity and sexuality. It, it's it's you know it's our time now. It's this it, time. It, it really does. It, it really does feel like that, and that's why yeah. I guess I love coming back to these holidays from the past that were about sex right. and fire and nature, and right. kind of reconnecting to them. And a lot and, of people never heard yes. of it. No, I know. But I think, but it's never gone away. Despite yeah. all the suppression, it has never, never gone away. These are nights that became very associated with witches. You know, yes. Vol, you know, Valpurgis is a little spookier than... Um, I like the name. Yeah, me too. It's a little spookier than Beltane. And, you know, the another name for it in Germany is Hexenacht. Oh. You know, the witches' night. Really? So this is... This is the night for the witches to fly, for the free people to fly. Yeah. So can, can we talk about, um, I know we talked about, we always do a show for Samhain and yeah. we talk about the thinning. And this is the exact opposite. You know, this is the other side of the year. Yes. Yes. That's so, what I was I mean, it's, it's like, it's like literally the other side, you know, the other, the other, you know, the other side of the coin. So it's a very, very, very powerful night. It is. And, and do you, do you still, um, is there still that same thinning of the veil? That happens. Yes. Okay. Um, and not so much with the dead. This is the first of the fairy festivals. Oh, it's yes. More, so um, traditionally, there are three fairy festivals, the three nights of the spirits, Beltane, Midsummers, which will be at the end of June, and then Samhain. Yes. Um, and then and then that ushers in the time of the dead and the ancestors and, you know, that cold time when you 
Mm-hmm. Tell blanket time. Tell spooky stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I mean, I wouldn't say no. It is something that if that's important to you, it is, it is, um, it is a really spiritually and magically powerful time of the year, but it is probably, you know, all things being equal, if you don't have a crushing need to, you know, to look for the dead, it is a time better spent with, with spirits yes. of all kinds, with sexuality, with creativity, really good time to be trying to get pregnant if you want to be pregnant. And if you oh. don't want to be pregnant, maybe, you know, and if you are, you know, fertile myrtle, maybe this is a time <laughs> to, you know, take some precautions. <laughs> I did. I had some, uh, some guests uh, or some, uh, some, some people I know, I saw, I posted that I was interviewing you and people wrote in some questions. Yeah. Um, again, we don't have a lot of time right That's now. So nice. Um, so one of the questions that my friend asks, she's just gone through a divorce and I love you by the way, I know she's listening or she will be listening. Um, and she's asking, you know, are there rituals to participate in to bring sex back into her life? Cause she's yeah. kind of put, you know, been through that winter cold spell. Yeah. I would start not on May 1st itself, but April 30th. Okay. If that's possible. Yeah. Do, I mean, if it's possible, do it the night before. Then okay. you know, the night before is considered. It's it's like all that anticipation of the power. So at dusk, the night before May first, um, I I would start with um, do some cleansing rituals for yourself first, and because of the time of the year, m- make them sexy, romantic. Uh, yes. it, it can be. And it can, you can throw salt in the bath, but you could also, you know, make yourself like a, a salt scrub with a little bit of oil and some salt nice. and, you know, put some sexy perfume in it, some, some flowers, you know, something the flowery. Yeah. I always love, you know, the Minoy from Tahiti. It's, it's the Gardenia. Mm, oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, to me, that's like very romantic. Mm. Um, you, you, something that, that makes you feel beautiful, especially if you... If life has battered you around a little bit, yes. focus on making yourself feel powerful and healed and whole and beautiful. And I loved, you know, I don't. There's a name for it, which I can't remember. There's that Japanese tradition of when something is broken. Oh, wabi sabi. You, you, well, you put it together with the gold. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the wabi you know sabi is the yeah. That's the perfection and the imperfection. But I do yes. know what you're talking about. Yes, but the there gold. is where you actually uh, repair it. And I, I've seen kits on Etsy. And I'm not oh sure my gosh! Over. I so, love that. You know, because so that after it's put back together, it, it doesn't just look broken. It's it's it sparkling, and beautiful. It looks better. Oh my god, that's great advice. And and it is a real. It is the Floralia, the Roman holiday. So it's a good time to work with the power of the flowers. Okay. So whatever flowers make you feel good. And then I would, um, you know, I mean, ideally, if you're, you know, if, if, if you're feeling sexy, you have a partner, you know, the partner yes. of your choice. Yes. But, but if you don't, let's just say this is your, um, your return to this part of your life. Yes. Then at midnight or after midnight, uh, Put something, you know, I mean, if, if you can, you can go out sky clad naked. And yes. if you can't, you know, if you can't, then put on something that it's like your power sexy clothing. You know, mm-hmm. do your nails, Kimonos, do your hair. Lipstick, yeah. All that good whatever stuff. Whatever makes you scarves, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. As much or as little as, as, as because it's about you. It's yeah. your sexuality. So it has to be yes. how you envision yourself. And that. in your power, I, I, for, I, for me, you know, I'm a cancer and I love the moon. And so yes. for me, I, I go out under the moon and I, I look for it because sometimes, you know, you can't find it. Uh, I go out under the moon and I talk to the moon and I ask the moon to bless me and mm-hmm. to send me what it is that I need. And if you need a lover, ask the moon to send you and tell. It will be the, a full moon, too, on the 30th. It, it it is it is okay yeah. to make a shopping list. Tell, <laughs> you don't you you don't want just any lover because I mean no, look you know you, you want to you, you know everything. If, if you don't care you can just go to any bar and there will be someone. Yeah, but that's... but make a list of exactly what you want and what you don't want, mm-hmm. and you can make it 
as specific. You want someone who smells of tobacco or you <laughs> don't want someone. You want someone, you know, I never want to sleep with someone who snores again. Yes. Whatever it Whatever. is, put your order out there. Put your order. Then, so actually write it down. Yeah. Like I'll actually write it. Yeah. If you write it down, um, if you write it down, I would burn it then. Okay, burn it under the full moon. I love that. Yeah, you can burn it depending on what your situation is. You can just burn it, or yeah. you can put it under a candle. You can let you can create a candle for yourself. Put it under the candle and let the candle burn on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you know, uh, let the ashes scatter. You know, take them take them to a romantic spot and let them scatter if you can. I think that's. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely doing that. And so now, alternatively, yeah, see, I, I I could do this all day. Alternatively. Yeah. Alternatively, take the ashes or take your note, and if you have a uh, if you have a garden or or in a flower pot, bury them with some seeds, because oh. what what is buried grows. Yes, plant it. Plant it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And with some nice flowers, you know. Yeah, yeah. That would be beautiful. Your, whatever your favorite is. If your favorites are flowers or herbs or, you know, if you worry, you know, if you worry about killing things, um, you know, get a succulent. They don't die that <laughs> easily. Oh God, <laughs> I wouldn't do you know, cactuses. No. I wouldn't do cactuses because cactuses are traditionally um, about keeping people away. That's true. <laughs> All the spikes. True. But succulents, like an aloe, something like an agave, something like that. Yeah. Great. And I just love, uh, I love the power that we have that we don't even know yeah. we have just the intention of our action. Yeah. And even if it's May 2nd or 3rd or 4th, you can still do this, right? It, I mean, you know, if, if you, if you can't do it on the right day, do it on the next day. Yeah. Do exactly. it, do, do it when you can and, and uh, create your own May day. Now, I, I wanted to ask you, you brought up the burning, which is like, yeah. I love fire. I'm practically a pyro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just love it. Um, now, but wasn't Beltane a, a fire holiday? Beltane is both a fire, but Beltane is really unusual in that it's a fire and a water holiday. Oh, wow. Um, yes, there are uh, traditionally bonfires are built on yes. Beltane. They used to drive cattle through them. Like they do two bonfires and drive the cattle in between in the them. middle oh wow yeah which you know you know and if you know, you know cows don't really want to go so you have no. to like you know they don't um, want to go through the middle but, of fire <laughs> and, and, uh, and depending where you are they would often drive them into a lake or into an ocean and you know just let them get to take a bath and come back out you know yeah. you, don't, you don't want this is not this is um in order to remove any um evil magic that you know Yes. You know your 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 rival neighbors may have put on your cattle, <laughs> so uh, you know it. it's all cleansing. It is a it is a really you know in a perfect world you'd be having bonfires on the beach. Yes, which you can do only in some places now. In right. Florida, you can. You can't in California at all anymore. It's no, really well, I mean for good reason too. Yeah, or you know what, a lake. But I mean, if you have a pool, you could create some. You know, you could get some tiki torches. <laughs> <laughs> or like oh a little gosh, fire pit or something, you know, if you have a pool, you can control it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a great night for pyromancy, which is uh, divination by fire, which is easy. Or you just sit and you gaze into the fire and uh -huh. let things come into your mind. Some, you know, come with a question and see see what the fire tells you. But it's a great night for swimming. It's a great night for any kind of spells that involve water. Okay. Any kind of spells that involve plants and flowers, anything having to do with anything generative, anything where you want to create something, start something, build something, whether it's whether it's a baby or a business, it's it's really a perfect time. I, I love baby or business, and it's kind of both, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you. I had another um, uh, listener write in uh, asking about specifically fertility. If she wants, yeah. she wants to get pregnant. Um, is there something that she could do, a ritual, maybe an old ritual? I know. Now, I'm just interjecting my knowledge. I heard that there was lots of, like, sex in the woods and that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know if that's, like, really feasible for some people, but I know well, other people. You know, you, you have loving. to like that. You know, I'm an urban girl and a sex in the woods person. <laughs> you know, I know, I, you know, you, you give me a hotel room. <laughs> right? With the view. But, um, yeah. <laughs> So but are there um, some rituals for that kind of stuff. You, you know, that's actually how I started writing. I have a big unpublished book of, uh, of fertility, but there are. I mean, I, I'm going to give you a specific now, okay. but 
it, this is not a one size fits all. Okay. So there there are more fertility spells in my book Encyclopedia of Five Thousand Spells. Okay. The thing with Beltane is it is literally the the time the earth it's literally um a power day i I don't know a better way to say it it's a power day and so it's like you're swimming with the current if if you were planning to schedule you know an ivf or a romantic night it's a it is if you were a betting person traditionally it's a it's it's a good time. It's believed, allegedly, that um, like the the world is with you, and they'll cool. they'll give you a little extra lift off. But there's all sorts of. Th- I like amulets. There's all sorts of fertility amulets. You can, you know I very rarely met an amulet I didn't like, but um, <laughs> I feel about crystals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crystals too. Though look for yeah. the crystals. You know you know. Um, Wherever wherever you are having sex, yes. um, make make it an altar, and you can mm. use crystals for that. Specifically, crystals having to do with the moon, selenite, um, oh, just don't moon get it wet. stones, because mm. you, you want you want things that are going to sort of give you that extra lift off, push you, encourage you to be fertile, encourage this this to occur there are flower essences of various times that you can um you can add them to the bath you don't have to take them internally i I don't like the way they taste so you can put them in a massage oil you can add them to your bath they're very very profound uh you can take flowers any in particular uh, oh there's there's i've tried off the top of my so many yeah there's so many and and some of them are in my books Okay. But um, I think there's I an have Australian here. bush. I think there's an Australian bush essence called she oak. She oak, um, and I think that is traditionally beneficial for fertility. Awesome. And fig and pomegranate. Oh and, yeah, you know Red all raspberry. those all those fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. The you if you let your if you kind of let yourself not be inhibited. If you look at them you'll know which are the fertility ones. They are either the ones that look like genitalia, bananas, mm-hmm. cucumbers, peaches, you know? Yeah. How about um, um, papaya? Oh, the coco de mer, yeah. <laughs> or as with as with papayas, look for fruits that have a ton of seeds. Mm-hmm. So you don't want your seedless watermelon. You you want that, you want like a dragon fruit or you want the watermelon that you I've open I've heard it up of people and, just blending up the seeds and drinking them. I don't, yeah, know I don't know if they taste like good. Yeah. <laughs> they um, they take the watermelon seeds and um the, um you know the uh, Chinese mooncakes for the lunar festival oh. whatever the you can the filling can reflect your wish so there are prosperity oh. fillings and but the one for fertility actually is watermelon seeds. Oh wow. Okay, well there yeah. you go guys. Yeah, so I mean I I don't personally know how to how you make it taste good. But yeah. I'm sure there's a recipe someplace. Toast them, baby. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really that big on. Uh, I like throwing everything in a blender and just hoping for the yeah. best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. That might work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so those so are the cool. the things things that are very ripe. Plants mm-hmm. like um, morning glories that that like you know you, you plant one and the next thing you know it's on like rooftops three blocks away. Yes. Things that are prolific. Because it, it's sort of you—you you want that sympathetic magic where that's how you want to be too. I mean, until you don't want to be, but you know, you want all those beautiful succulent seeds, pomegranates, and that um, you know will then bear fruit. Yep, that is so cool. And so you know, this is just part of that intentional practice and that yeah. idea. I think people, and again, we can talk more about this, um, but it's something that I always like to touch on. People think, you know, casting spells and witchcraft, um, there's such a negative connotation or that it's done to malign people. But I mean, wouldn't you agree? This is more about kind of working with your own energy and the energy. Yeah, but there's been for the past 2000 years, you know, there's been more because, you know, the Romans were not witchcraft friendly even before Christianity, 
there's been so much propaganda yeah. against spells and witchcraft and shamanism, and a lot of that is tied into female sexuality and female yes. power. And um, yeah, I it really I don't know. There's a lot of false negative information out there, and a lot of fear. After and of course, after two thousand years of propaganda, sure, why wouldn't burning, people be afraid? Burning people at the stake, like you know, sure. exterminating huge groups of people, whether it's like the Druids or whoever. I mean, but but you see, it's not the spell that did that. No, it, no, it, no. But but people are afraid to express that part of themselves because somebody will come and say you're a witch, and you know yeah. we're going to burn you. Um, yeah. But it's, I mean, ideally, and Beltine is a time of joy. Yes, it should be a time of exuberance and this is not a time um, of fear and energy yeah exactly and spells ideally when you're doing them you know sometimes you just do a ritual for the moon because it feels good Mm -hmm. and it's joyous Mm -hmm. and and that's that's just tapping into your joy and your power i you know that's enough sometimes it is well, wow, that was a totally awesome explanation um, of how to use, just who how to tap into ritual and history for the future. Um, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, Judica Ellis and I are going to talk more about kind of where witchcraft is headed in the future a little bit and just kind of more about connecting to our sexuality and what that means for creativity. So stick with us and we will be right back after this break. Do you ever feel as if you're working twice as hard but only getting half as far? Are you trying to connect with your path in life and finding it elusive? Mainstream Metaphysics Radio is a weekly call-in show where we harness our connection with the universe and use what is in our power to affect change for optimal success and happiness. This hit show bridges the divide between what is and what we do not know. Eve, named one of the country's top psychics, also known as the MBA Psychic, invites you on this journey for this live call-in show with readings, featured guests, leaders, and visionaries in both business and spiritual callings. So join Eve Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as she takes metaphysics mainstream. For more information about Eve, visit EliteTarot.com. That's EliteTarot.com. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values, and attitude in a dynamic way. To learn more about Sarah and her work, visit sarahmain.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. This is Debbie Pokornik with a moment for standing in your power. Self-control begins with noticing how different feelings present themselves in your body. When you're feeling sensitive, for example, your chin might quiver, tears might well up in your eyes, and your voice might catch in your throat. Anger, on the other hand, might appear as tension in your jaw, back, or arms, along with clenched fists, heat in the upper torso, scowling, and a strong desire to yell. The more aware you become of your body cues, the easier it will be to recognize when you're on the road to disaster. 
choose the emotions that cause you problems, then start noticing and logging the body cues that come with them. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. That's EmpoweringNRG.com. Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. I'm here with Judica Illis, and we've just been having a very lit time talking all, <laughs> literally lit, uh, talking about Beltane and spring and creativity and sexuality and all these really joyful, wonderful things. And if you're like me, you can just feel that spring feeling in the air, um, that, that excitement and that intensity building and that energy and, and the, the weather change and the flowers everywhere. And it kind of gives you a good feeling inside. And when we're talking about spells and witchcraft and all that, I think Judica, you would agree what we're really talking about is harnessing that energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's what a spell is. It's harnessing yeah. that energy that the energy exists without yes. us. It's just a current in yes. the universe, but you know, it, it's like riding a wave. It's, it is, you know, really just plugging into it and sometimes bending it and twisting it and shaping it so that it helps bring you the happiness that you desire and helps you achieve the goals you want. You know, it's what I think is really cool is from a scientific perspective what we're learning from like quantum field theory and quantum physics is the fact that there are actually these waves and vibrations yeah. existing at all times. And yeah. they're even within us and within our cells. And we can change the vibration in our body to match whatever vibration exists in the outside because we're all basically the same when you <laughs> vibrating. <laughs> yeah, we're all just Yeah, vibrating. no, it's really fast. And, and that's, you know, for people who maybe are, um, renewing an interest in witchcraft or maybe just starting an, yes. an interest in the magical arts, Beltane is the perfect time to just tune in with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Even even if all you do, you know, find the moon, you know, do a little moon bathing or just, you know, sit inside, sit outside and maybe if you can and Feel the breeze and maybe do a little meditation and feel yourself vibrating with all the other magical practitioners who are at the same time. Um, it's, it's very profound. And put your feet on the earth, your bare feet. Yeah. That's like put your, yeah. What they or in the water. Sing yeah. Ground. yeah, whatever. Yeah, that, yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how that will change the way you feel almost instantly. Like it affects yeah. the ion makeup of your body or something. And um, I'm yeah. glad... Yeah, no, go. No, you go. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I'm glad you brought that up for people who are new, because like we've kind of been alluding to throughout the show, witchcraft, magic, all of that, it's had a bad uh, reputation for thousands of years. And yet most people don't really understand it. And even back when witches were being burned at the stake, people didn't really understand it. And so I think part of this well, they whole... burnt the people who interested they it. You know, <laughs> you know I, I remember having you on or, the show. Or, or like, other people kept their mouth shut. Oh, you know, exactly. you, you, you couldn't really speak. I mean, we could not be doing what, we, what we're doing now. We could yeah. not be having this as a public conversation. No. I, mean, I, you know, I think that, you know, sometimes it's a lot of pressure. Oh, I have to do a spell. Is it going to work? It, 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 it's ultimately about joy and ecstasy. It. Well, and that's it. And strip, you know, strip, we got to put the fun back into all of this. Yeah. Just get more than ever, just as a have culture. Have fun with it. Like, don't make it be like a. It's yeah. a good night to just have fun, yes. even if you know. I've got a yeah. book with five thousand spells. You can find a spell that you want to try. <laughs> but try it. Try it for fun. Yes. See what happens. Yes, and and, and do again, like a psychic empowerment. You know, just for yourself. Yeah. Oh, see, I like that. I have your yeah. book of five thousand spells. So you know, do uh, <laughs> there's increased luck spells. Everybody can always use a little. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's no pressure with that. If it doesn't work, nothing will happen. I mean, you'll just be where you are right now. Exactly. But you'll at least have this experience of trying something yeah. and practicing. Because that's what a lot and, of this is. Yeah. And ideally, ideally, you have a beautiful night or a beautiful day. And, and, and that, you know, 
the, it's like the, the action is the reward in itself. Yes. Okay. So that's a really good way of saying it. Um, I also, just as a side note, um, that Japanese technique that we were talking to yeah. it's called Kintsugi oh. and it stands for golden joinery. Yeah. I have to uh, remember. Yeah. I just looked I it up. I think about it a lot. Me but too. I always and forget what it's called. For those of you just tuning in. Yeah. It's that, that idea of when something breaks and then Japan, they put it back together using this gold liquid that molded it together and it looks even more beautiful, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. It's just, I just, I think that that is a metaphor for a lot of like what our society has gone through with the divine feminine too, that it was mm -hmm. kind of like full and then it got dismantled and now it's being put back together. Only it's even more beautiful because of the su the suffering and the struggle that so many people have had to go through. And, you know, and it, there are people who are resisting. There are people yeah. who, um, you know, who find this, but I, I don't, I think this is inexorable. I think this is oh, yeah. where we're going. So, exactly. you know, y you can resist and you can be harmful and you can, Oh, but, I, I've, but this is where we're going. <laughs> sorry, something just popped in my head. A man can do this too, right? Like this yeah. isn't just. Oh, yeah. A yeah. man, a woman, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever, you, whatever a unicorn, whatever, <laughs> you know, whoever you, whoever you, I think all you have to do is be a human being. Mm -hmm. Good. That all you have to do is be a human being. It, it's all, you have to be a human being and um, that's really it. It, it's it's our shared heritage, magical spells. No, oh, it is, it is, and and you know what do you, what do you think about the resurgence in our culture of all of these magical creatures like unicorns and yeah. mermaids, and it's like and fairies. It's like so popular now. They have an all unicorn festival here in Denver, and it sells wow. out. Is yeah. it fun? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never in town for it, so wow. I don't know. But I mean. I, it's well, you know, these, all these things have never gone away. I mean, and that tells you how powerful they are, whether they're spells or these, you know, possibly other dimensional beings. I, despite centuries and centuries and centuries of brutal persecution, they persist. Yes. And now I think, I, th I think, I think with the ox, you know, we can breathe again, you know, yeah, but we have to be vigilant. You have to be vigilant to guard your rights. And make sure that this is not, you know, a temporary glitch in history. Because right. I'd like to be able to, you know, Dr. Kelly and I would like to be able to, five years, still be talking oh, yeah. about, you know, oh, wonderful yeah. advancements. How about and, in 500, we'll be ESP. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it going away. But I, I no. absolutely agree. We, I think it's important to recognize how hard fought this is. And yeah. therefore, we have a duty to have fun with it and enjoy yeah. it and spread it yeah. around. You know, that that's really what this is all about. Sometimes having fun and being happy is a revolutionary act. I completely, no, I completely agree. Just having yeah, Seriously. Fun. I, no, I say that in all seriousness. No, I agree. Sometimes uh, just uh, being happy despite circumstances. Well, and especially, uh, you know, you know we've, women, you know, like so many yeah. of my friends have been in abusive relationships or bad oh, yeah. relationships or they've been sexually abused or emotionally oh, yeah. abused. So I agree that like recovering from that trauma, it me takes too. Energy. Yeah, me too. Uh, it, I mean, yeah. we all we all have our stories. Yeah. You know, so, when you turn on the television and every commercial is designed to make you feel bad about yourself, yeah, uh, right? So, so <laughs> you know, it, it is really revolutionary to, to love yourself. And um, rose quartz is really good rose for that. Rose quartz, I yeah. love spirit quartz yeah. too. Yeah, and I find labradorite super soothing. Oh, I love labradorite. Oh, and labradorite good. is so magical. Yeah. That's a good Beltane crystal. Oh, good. You know, uh, this house that I'm living in, we bought we bought this house almost four years ago, but the, the countertops have labradorite in them, and I was like, oh, must be gorgeous. Done buying sold. I was like, I don't care about the rest of the house. Like, I'm just going to sit here at this counter for the rest of my life and like put my face on it. <laughs> and, and you know, any crystals that um, remind you of fire. Yes. Or gemstones, you know, fire opals. I mean, you know, yes. you, could, you know, get a little pricey, but even anything yeah. with sort of a, you know, you'll know if you look at it and it reminds you of flames. Yes. That's a great crystal. Oh, I love that. Well, can you believe that's all we have time for today? Yeah, I know the time oh. flies. <laughs> but um, wow, thank you so much. Thank Luka. you. It's oh, it's lovely. always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of your wisdom and good vibes. And ultimately, 
you're absolutely right that like be happy and have fun. And that is, that will take you very, very far on your journey, whoever you are and yeah. wherever you're going. So I yeah, love and that. You deserve it. You deserve to, yeah, you are worthy of love and you deserve yeah. to have fun and have an amazing Beltane, everyone. I hope you celebrate and you can write into me um, on the lucidplanet.com or on my Facebook. Tell me what you did for your celebrations. We would love to know. Um, and on that note, um, yeah, I'll be, uh, I will see you guys next month for another show. But in the meantime, yeah, light and love. And thank you again to Judica Illis. Always a pleasure. All right, bye guys. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly. This show's audio was via a Skype call. 